Hello everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video we will be reviewing everything covered in this week's dev blog, dev blog number 15. This dev blog covered the new 0.9.7 update, as well as gave more insight into their plans moving forward. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. To start off, they reviewed the new 0.9.7 ground support update. However, I've already covered that in a separate video, so for the sake of your time, as well as mine, I'll leave a link to my coverage of that in the description. However, they covered some more details about the reception to the new map, Arland, stating that some players liked Combat Ops so much that they made 64 person servers for it. This scenario was only designed for 6 players, however, so they've been taking some notes from this experience and plan on working on an option to make doing such a thing easier, including more tasks, you know, more types of tasks, more factions, an Evron version, friendly deploy map, map markers, and as well as a more dynamic mission flow, and finally, perhaps even a limit on deploy tickets to make it, you know, just more risky and more entertaining all around. But all in all, this is a sign that Combat Apps has been very popular and will, they will be working on improving it going forward. Next up, they covered the new scenario framework in the workbench. This is a framework guide for people who want an easier experience setting up custom scenarios. From here, they issued a thank you to the community for their patience and to the community for understanding the limited scope of ground support, followed by an apology for the limited scope, explaining why the update was trimmed with the following statement. We understandably know that many players were disappointed by the decision not to include certain features. During a re-evaluation of our development process, we concluded that the game scale is sufficient to change our development strategy. Based on that, we decided to remove or disable many of the ground support features for the first release and start delivering them in batches with upcoming major updates. This allows us to focus more on ensuring the quality of features, leaving us fewer problems to resolve later on, establishing a better foundation for expanding systems and technologies in the future. Our previous method simply didn't allow us to test everything in every combination. We'd like to deliver new content only after through testing to minimize the danger of introducing any new bugs as much as possible. With that being said, only after we've fulfilled our promises with ground support milestone will we move on to the next anticipated set of content, the Air Assault milestone update. They then gave more clarity into the update process, stating that their current development focus is to produce smaller updates with fixes, stability updates, optimizations, and more improvements more frequently with a priority on quality and stability. Saying directly, he may look forward to a steady flow of enhancements and occasional presets in the form of unique toys or gameplay features. This small scope of particular updates will hopefully result in a much smoother experience with extensively tested and polished novelties. They finished over with more clarity about timelines, first stating they no longer have an estimated time when Armor of Forger will leave early access, and that the window for the early access period will need to be extended beyond the original one year estimation. Before going into details, stating that things will slow down around the holidays, however they intend on starting the new year out strong. So we do have that to look forward to. But until then, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time. Thank you.